Hello everyone and welcome back one final time tonight when we go into our last matchup of the evening, Harry. Rafa taking on Nosfa. This one is set to hopefully be a good bookend to the day. We've had some close games, we've had some twists and turns. We saw a great match just now versus Razy and Kilsum. Let's hope this one's going to carry on with the same trend. I hope so too. Always, always a pleasure to see Rafa play here in the Quake Pro League against a player who's extremely aggressive. One of the mm. aim stars in the Americas scene, of course, it is Nosfer. Nosfer has been a little bit unpredictable in comparison to what he's usually like. I think Rafa could read him quite easily in previous stages, but it's nice to see Nosfer make a little bit of progress here and there, but still struggling to adapt to some of these American players. Yeah, yeah. I I think we've we've seen a lot from Nosfar and it felt like at some point he kind of dropped off for a big period. We didn't really see him racking up those results as much as possible, which is a shame because he is a raw talent to watch. He is a treat when he gets going, when he starts playing with confidence and he does just, you know, play with that raw Nosfar aggression. So, so good. I hope we get more of that specifically today, Harry. Nosfer is just extremely flashy, isn't he? Like with every, yeah. everything he does, everything he executes, pinces his opponent. He does it in a flashy way. But of course, he is there for the W, just like anyone else here. But we we'll have to see what Nosfer can do now. And in the last three stages, he has he was quite predictable. It was quite easy to tell exactly what he's going to do. So for most of the players, they knew what to expect from Nosfer. Some hard gun guy who's literally trying his best to out aim his opponents and with a lot of movement and speed. But that was before. Now the players who kind of struggle to adapt due to their uh, lack of dual experience, he can topple them. But we'll have to see what he can do against Rafa. Rafa and Kula, I see as those two players who are the masters of downloading and adapting their opponents. Cypher, of course, is way up there too, probably more known to be mechanically gifted on top of things. So we'll have to see here. Rafa. It's going to be a big ass still for Nosfer, but I feel like Nosfer's a lot better than what it was in the last three stages. He's kind of in that purgatory period, but Rafa now, we know what he's like. We spoke about so much of him. A legend, won so many events. It's hard to really say that he, he can actually lose this. I'm sure he will be able to try and take this if he can. Nosfer, though, has a tall order and it's a big ask for him. Yeah, he, you know, individually just set the bar so much higher for everyone inside of the Quake community. He's gone from strength to strength, so many accolades to his name and uh, a huge pillar of the scene, really. It's good to have him back and obviously competing in the league once again now as he's just been so ahead of the curve, Harry. Hopefully he carries on with that trend as well. I, I think in terms of points, it, it, at this point, really doesn't matter what results come out for him on the way towards finals. So I don't think mathematically he can actually be knocked off that top spot due to how good he's been playing the entire way through, which, you know, just as a statement alone, that sets enough of a precedent. The fact that he's nearly broken into a thousand points, it's just outrageous. I'm pretty sure I mentioned this last week, but I need to double check. But he hasn't lost a series in the Pro League. If you don't include the finals, of course he's lost series in the Pro League in terms of the finals, because that way he would have won every single stage otherwise. But in terms of standard play, he hasn't dropped a series. Is this going to be the first one? I'm not too sure. If Nos Nosfer Dengarun is a bit more unorthodox, we'll have to see. But the maps have come in, and so we will be Bale, Awoken, and Ruins. It looks like Ruins, the Ison versus Sorlag. That should be quite a fast one, but Rafa knows that needs to make sure to get that first frag or else he will be in a little bit of trouble especially with that slide mechanic going back to the first one bj versus sorlag quite standard sorlag you know we don't really see too much of unveil in all honesty and awoken the nyx versus a ranger again another standard meta matchup hmm okay all right starting us off on veil We've had some of the more ridiculous games on Veil today. We've had it in nearly every series. I think it's it's actually been in like seven out of the eight. So that should be pretty damn good. That actually should be a fun way to start us off, especially when you've got obviously the big girl herself coming out for Nosfa on the Sorlak. Awoken, that will be a close type fight as well. Nosfa's always had some historically good games on Awoken. He's good with Ranger. We know what sort of plays he can pull out from the Dire Orb. So that will be fun. And then to shut us down for the night, Ruins. I think on that one, there is actually a bit of a potential for Nosfa, but of course it, it's hard, right? It also doesn't matter how much we say there's a chance here because every time we get into the game, any of our theories are just completely blown and left by the wayside, purely off the back of what Rafa does when he's in game. He's a whole different beast. It's hard to ever get results off this man. And I wouldn't be surprised if this was another 3-0 in the night, Harry. 
Yeah, it, it will be a real shame, but even if it was a 3-0, but hopefully Nosford can put up a really good fight, keep the scores close. That's what he's going to be aiming for. Of course, he's going to be aiming for, to win the series. No one's done it yet in standard Pro League play, but we'll have to see. Of course, Rafa has lost a few maps, not many. It is a rare occurrence here, Jack, but I'm sure he could do. And even with Rafa, it's like with the map choices, it's pick your poison. He's good on most yeah. of them, if not all of them. It's so difficult to say that this is his best map of this one. I used to think it was Blood Covenant, but he hasn't even chosen Blood Covenant first. He's kind of left it last or leave it lingering for actually for Nosfer to decide. But Nosfer does know that he's very good with the Athena on Blood Covenant. So he's decided to go for Ruins, even if it's not really his kind of choice in terms of like what he, you know, what's his kind of favoritism in terms of those two maps. But we'll have to see, though, you know. I'm sure Rafa's just going to be doing the work as always. Nosfer needs to make sure he continues to be less predictable, continues to be unorthodox, make sure that he tries adapts to how Rafa plays. But that's the problem, see. Rafa can adapt to almost any player, and he's kind of like cooler or base in terms of, you know, choosing the fights on his terms. It's a very, very tough opponent, but he forces the mistakes as well. So really, you don't know what style of Rafa you're going to get. It always depends on which map and uh, the situation he's in. No, yeah, he's a man that can fit many molds, right? Like he always plays against the player. He plays against the individual. He never just plays a certain style. And that's why he's been so damn good at the game. Like it's hard to know what must be going on inside of Rafa's heads because he's just always thinking so many steps ahead of the competition. It's crazy. From a spectator perspective, he gives us some of the best mechanical quake that you know we've had throughout the years. It's always been a blast to see. And in a matchup versus someone that is also as talented as Nosfer, this could give us a good series. We're going to be getting involved with it, though, going straight into Veil of Naf to kick us off. So that is going to be a spicy one. Opening us up, of course, we've got the BJ pick there from Rafa, all about the Akimbo, all about laying down the law with the dual wield. For Nosfer, he's got the spit to play with. He's on the sore lag, but is he going to be causing some ruckus? Or will Rafa need to protect his neck going into this one? As the Nosfer killer bees are on the swarm, he's on the hunt, and he's looking for Rafa to start us off. I hope so for his sake, as Nosfer... Bouncing around for not for now to try and find Rafa. Managed to get the first rail. So at least he's got a slight advantage. Gets to second. The duel comes out for Rafa. Backs away. Knows the heavy's still there. Takes the risk. And the risk was worth taking. As Nosfer just barely survives on 6 HP after he picked up that mega. But is this going to be the first frag for Rafa? Yes, it will be. As he gets that first frag on the board. And he's going to push through. Nosfer's hoping to try and at least get some kind of trade. Decides not to and is going to keep the rockets for the time being as Rafa trying to figure out exactly what Nosfer is up to. This is the first rail. Decides to go through the telly. Couple of shots going out early on there on the fadeaway from Rafa. Does get the boop off with the rocket. Nice amount of damage done. There's a further 40 as well. But he's just overwhelmed. Mecha Nosfer. On the corner turn, just able to unload into him with the LG, eventually takes him down with a gigawatts and puts himself into a good position. Tied up 1-1, one, one. Rafa coming around the corner, blowing the top clean off there, shot after shot coming out. The response from the rail was a near miss, and Nosfer's not able to punish yet. Instead, he has to dip down and begin to scavenge, building back up his stack from a few of those smaller items as he'll pick up the light and a couple of health bubbles. Still defending towards the mega spawn as well. He can muddy the timing, but only slightly as he just lurks around here, Harry. Playing for the bigger picture. He knows he's on that heavy champ, but he's got a lot of strength to use when he builds up that stack. Rafa playing from some orthodox angles as he peeks down, shot after shot, couple of tags here and there, but not enough for him to fully commit to the fight. Nosfer, coming out of pocket ammo. Gonna back away and try and do what he can with the LG. 45 HP, the rail comes in, very nice from him, and finally takes the lead and gets additional rocket ammo. Gets the light armor, has left the mega for the time being, just to give himself additional 25 HP, but also to delay the timing to throw Rafa off if he can. A little bit unexpected. First rail comes through again, nicely done by Nosfer, waiting for him to at least appear again. Backs away, gets the draw. Tried to get the light, but finally gets it. I think he just barely skimmed it. As Rafa gets the heavy for himself. But now he needs to try and make a play for the Mega, but the shotgun comes through. Rafa still expects him to be up top. But Nosfer gets the first rail, misses the second, sadly. But we will have to give up on the Mega and maybe contest for the heavy if he can. 
Nosfer, a couple of shots going down as he waits for the oncoming. I'm still expecting Rafa to push him. He's got four rails left in reserve. He sets the pace as well as he sees Rafa coming towards him. Drops off. Ooh, was hoping he could get away and actually create enough distance, but it won't matter. Rafa, the human hole punch. Just ripping him to pieces as he impacts onto him there. Drops down as well with the follow-up. Double LG, double the action as he can serve up some more punishment into this one. Obliterating Nosfer. And now he's starting to kick it into the tempo we expect from a man like Rafa. This is where he begins to run away with the game and really put some big numbers up. A lot of damage done. I expected a bit more aggression from Nosfa, but I feel like Rafa's just holding him back in some ways just from doing that he, Nosfer always feels like he knows he's been known for exactly where he is at all times which is true Rafa's done some great predictions in terms of where he could be on his whereabouts he knows where he is now he's on top of that telly waiting for him to come through Rafa's not going to fall for it but delays this as much as he can and decent damage with the LG but Nosfer's just slowly but surely Holding on for dear life as he backs away on that tri -bolt, waiting for the heavy to come through. But it doesn't matter, Rafa is definitely going to be going for that, just barely misses that first rail. Will he get the second? You can see Nosfa still trying to back away, but surely he's going to get taken down. Yes, he will. And Rafa will extend his lead 4-2 while he's trying to keep him away from the Rockets if he can. Rafa, again, just spams out with the tri -bolt. The trials and tribulation. Of the tri -bolt. It's been a weapon that's helped him out a lot so far with some of the shots he's been pulling off. Very effective at the predictive plays. Jumps his way back over with a nail jump as well. And tries to beat Nosfer to the punch when it comes to the timing there on the heavy. Basically had him locked in place like a spider inside a cup, Harry. He had nowhere he could go. Peeks back round on the stairway as well. It's an easy follow-up frag to find for Rafa as he'll shut him down with the shotty and send him back to slumber. Peeks back again on the stairs as well as he'll lean over the ledge with the rockets. Couple of shots coming out and it does put him so low. Oh, teetering on the barrier of this world and the next. And he'll send him packing with the rail as he drops down. A simple shot going out. There's the heavy pickup as well. Rafa, shot after shot, just unloading onto Nosfa now. Building himself a big stack whilst tearing his way through his opponents. For once, the tides do turn a little bit. We also have the spit coming back out from Nosfa and that damage over time. Nearly finishing him off, especially when he had HMG bullets riddling him into the buttocks as he makes his move back over. Grabs a light health to at least give himself something to keep him in the game. Rafa has been two or three steps ahead throughout most of this game, but now this is Nosfa's turn with the map and item control. See if he can do some damage against Rafa, but Rafa knows exactly what he's like. The aggression will come in shortly. Just needs to be careful on his whereabouts. He's keeping track and tabs on where he could be. This is good play from Rafa. Just sitting back, just making sure he keeps a height advantage, even if he hasn't got the stack advantage. Try bolts. Very good damage from him, but look at this. Nosfus just standing there, daring him to at least peek out once more. But now, Rafa's decided to back away for the time being, just to see if he can just keep him at bay, gets the Mega, delays him enough, but will not have time to contest the Heavy. But this is good from Rafa, just keeping height advantage no matter where he is, make sure he gets the first shot, just basically showing the map presence that Nosfa gets intimidated by. 6-2. to two. He's built himself a good lead to play with, and Rafa... He's never a man to start doing ridiculous things. He always plays safe. He always plays the high percentage game and just looks for the W wherever he can. Into this one, Nosfer going in with something a bit more explosive. Does go for the drop down, impacting onto him as he'll detonate himself over the top of Rafa and be able to destroy him. Response from Nosfer to start gobbing all over the place as he spits everywhere, Harry. Gets those globules down to deny it. The pathway from Rafa. Repositions as well, dashing through the air as he grabs the extra stack. And look at the size of it. He's ginormous now, but it won't matter. He might have had the biggest sack you could have asked for. It was absolutely humongous, but he's been torn to shreds. Rafa. Just over him like a rash. Doesn't miss a shot. Every single bullet hit. And he bombards his way through him. Looking for even more as well. Skewers him with the railgun. As we hit the eight minute mark, Rafa's just showing absolute dominance. He is the king of the world. Masterclass plays there from Rafa. 
even though he is one of those players in Quake where he can adapt to any style, he is also one of the most mechanically gifted players out there to just to make matters worse for a lot of his opponents. And look at his direct rockets, another one that's 177 damage and the rail to follow up. Absolute filth once again. Raph is just not holding back and the nail is coming out to the dual world as well. Just keeping him back just so it can at least not only contest the heavy, but pick it up too. But Nosfer still got atomic control. Decides to leave the Mega, but now has gone for it. But it doesn't matter at this point. Raph is just doing everything he can. Rail after rail. Misses the second one, but the damage has already been done. The chase is on. He's going to be going straight for him. 24 MN Nosfer. What does he do, Jack? Commit suicide. Oh, he's done a Sparty, Harry, at the worst possible time. <laughs> To be fair, it's done. It's over, right? Like, yeah. Rafa right now quite literally just has nails in one hand and a hammer in the other. And he is nailing the coffin shut. Nosfer is stuck inside it. There's no opportunity for him to show some signs of life into this matchup. It doesn't matter that he's still breathing as he is out of the runnings here on Vale. This is Rafa territory. And he has just ran away with it. Stake to claim is an understatement for how he's performed here. I'm still a little bit just mind boggled by, by that encounter he had where Nosfer quite literally had the biggest stack possible. He was really just fully stacked going into it. And Rafa, armed with just a nail gun, ended it and ended the entire run in this map off the back of that encounter. It was sick. This has been a disgusting first map from Rafa. For him to dual wield with that nail gun and do all that damage, he must have hit almost every shot. But the great thing is, with that nail gun, as well as him dual wielding it, he was in close range, like almost in his face. So he could really not miss every shot. He didn't have to lead his yeah. shots in any way. We know the nail gun projectile base. But you're that close. It doesn't really matter too much. But it's really speaking of dual wield. He had the dual shotgun, cleaning things up, extending his lead just a little bit. GG's all round, and that's the first map all done and dusted. 12-2 to 2 in favour of Rafa, and it was uh, looking a little, little bit bleak at first. But then he just stepped it up like he normally does and gave Nosfa a real tough time. Hail to the King comes in with the double shotty, living up to the Army of Darkness there as he just punishes him, Harry. Looking huge. That was a... Uh... A tremendous first map performance coming into that obviously you know we, we've had sort of a, a little bit of up and down performance from Rafa and some of the other series so it's been hard to see what form he's going to come in with but th this just looks like vintage Rafa this is Rafa really just playing at some of his best goes for those calculated plays pulls out the showstoppers gives us those turn on a dime moments where we're just like this is outrageous how does he even pull this stuff off unfortunate for Nosfer as a first map though he loves a bit of ale he's always performed well on it in the past going into the second map of awoken it should be a lot closer this is a map where maybe i think there's more to be done and more to be seen from nosfa it is obviously the ranger versus the knicks rafa being the one on the knicks ranger being played out by nosfa i just hope we get to see a little bit more like this because even though it was quite one-sided it was a really fun series of frags like rafa was just pulling out all the stops he really was. You couldn't really make up most of what he was doing. It was just calm, calculated, aggressive when needed to be. He's got the perfect passive-aggressive balance. He knows when to push up and he knows when to attack and he knows when to sit back and wait for the first mistake to occur on his opponent. He does it every time. The amount of experience he's had underneath his belt in Quake is really showing. But the fact that his aim is just next to none is just ridiculous. Just like all the other top E regional players as well. It's so hard to count him out in any way. He always destroys most of his opponent and it's why it's one of the best and always will be and still is one of the best in the Americas and will continue to gatekeep one of those top two spots but then again Rafa played phenomenally well there were some times where he just should not have been taken down he was at a disadvantage but still lost so he still won it was actually ridiculous we'll have to see what Nosfer can do here at least with this map he's got a little bit more space to work with it is one of his better maps he does enjoy Awoken but I don't know, man. This is uh, going to be a tough one. If Rafa's giving top mid control and all the item control again like before and making the odd unpredictable rotations, then I'm not too sure what's going to happen. Either Nosfer's going to have a good time or he's going to have an absolute real awful time. We'll have to see <laughs> during the first few minutes. Man, yeah, it really is just like, how bad do you, you, know, do you want it? What level of Professor Rafa do you want to show up on the server here? And how much is he just going to come out swinging? Because that was a good display on the first map.
I feel like Awoken is going to be more of the same in that sense. And it, this is probably just going to be par for the course the whole way through the series. As right now, Rafa's looking just so, so good on the server, looking like a delicacy. And we can take another bite out of this one as we go into the second map now. Awoken's going to kick off. Professor versus Lightning in a bottle. That is what we have on the cards for this one. But who's going to start it off with a bang? Who will get that first striker, Lightning? Find that soon enough here. A nice little nail jump from Rafa after picking the heavy up. Listen, now for him, the Ghost Walk comes in. He's going to try and get behind him most probably. Two rockets, make it a third. Just barely but decides to back down as him and Nosfa on equal stacks. Not anymore. Or he will be now straight after that rocket. Picks up the Mega. So Rafa keeping Nosfa on his toes here. But Nosfa is used to being on his toes anyway with the speed and momentum he always has going into each of his matchups, especially on Awoken. But look at Rafa, though. He's literally stacked up to the eyeballs. Just not really giving Nosfa much chance, even though the first frag hasn't come up, baiting the top mid. And Nosfa's going to be, you know, in a bit of a difficult position here. As long as he gets some chip damage in before he makes it to push, he could be okay. We'll see. Slower style of play coming out now. It's Rafa creeping behind, sticking to the shadows and waiting for an opportunity to strike from the rear. He does a lot of damage. The follow-up is even better as well. Not missing a single tag there. The tracing from the LG was picture perfect. Harry, that was a Mona Lisa in play. So I'm in Louvre with that one. He's going for more as well. Knocked up into the air. Rafa's not content with just one masterpiece. He wants a second at that. And he's able to find him in rapid succession. Painting pretty pictures all over the shop here on Awoken and we're only a minute and 40 in. He really is indeed and the heavy machine gun comes out. Raph is going to be pushing straight in after that one uses the ghost walk. Backs away for now. I think he's just a little bit worried. I don't think he was comfortable with the position he was in. He decided to move out and try and reset. Mega up in 10. Heavy will be coming up a few seconds afterwards. The sides look at what he's going to be doing. Looks like he will be prioritizing the Mega. He knows Nosfer is looking for the heavy, but does, it depends really what he wants to go for here. He decides to go for the heavy anyway. It gets burnt. But if he takes him down, that's going to be huge because he can get the Mega as a follow-up. That was a huge rail. He desperately needed that or else Nosfer would have picked up that Mega and would have run away with it. Great play there from Rafa. Rafa's just... He's off the leash now. And like a dog that's outside in an open field, you let him off the leash, you're never getting him back. He's gone. It doesn't matter if you're screaming his name, Harry. He's just going to keep on running. But he's found himself another encounter. Something that's perked his interest. And he wants to try and get into these fights. Really smooth execution on the Ghost Walk. That was good. That was a nice way of actually keeping his distance and staying alive into this fight. Shooting down with a shotty as well as he cascades his way out. Just trying to build himself back up. And taking so much damage on the fadeaway. Oh, the 360 with the shotty. The dire orb was essentially at the end of his nose when he pulled the trigger to end the life of Nosfa. Decking him again. Rafa. How is he just so cinematic in the way he plays the game? Look, the victory shakes as well as he's nodding his head, Harry. Oh, Nosfa's gone. He's out the window. Oh, I was cracking up during that. He's like, yep, I did that. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> Great play from Rafa with the LG knocking him off the map too. But the five and the damage has already been done. Shotgun to boot, 6-0, and oh, 3 minutes and 45 in. So it doesn't matter too much for Nosfa, still got plenty of time, but I'm seeing a little bit of a repeat from when Nosfa played Rafa, where Rafa just is a little bit out of control there. The LG comes in, is going to see if he can take him down before the Mega comes up. Of course he will. Five seconds left, three now for the Mega to appear. But first he's going to get the light and delay the Mega on purpose. It's just absolutely messing with his head here, Jack. He couldn't make it up. <sighs> what on earth? What on earth? This has been such an odd four minutes. It's just been the Rafa show. And Rafa doesn't stop. Once he starts coming, he just keeps coming. And right now, Nosfa does look like he's being fed to the wolves as he's hit the ground running. We need to see something slowing down Rafa. Because if this keeps going on at this pace, 
This is going to be like a, a 22 kill game. This is going to be absolutely outrageous. Dire Orb this time actually finally operating well for Nos. We're allowing him to reposition. But he's terrified of what could be coming out as Rafa begins the chase, reappears. <sighs> Mortal. They're still immortal in the game. Taking him down once again as he brings that up to a nine to nothing lead. And he's still not stopping. Harry, second after second, he just wants to scrap. He's throwing punches at every available peak that comes out from Nosfa. That's one of the few times this game we've actually seen him miss. But he goes straight back to the shotty. And again, it's now another signature move as he'll shut down Nosfa. Buckshot everywhere. This is not looking good. It's a bit of a weird one. I don't understand why some of these players who come to the scoreline start becoming a bit more predictable. Like, you know, Rafa, surely Nosfa knew that Rafa was going to look at him when he's going for that heavy and then he's trying to fade out. He should have at least fired some kind of damage or at least some bullets at him just to kind of know that he knew he was there and tried to keep him at bay. But he hasn't done at all. It's just, I wouldn't say he's given up. Not at all. He's doing everything he can, but you can't. It's, it's no excuse to start being a little bit more predictable again. And now, you know, he's trying to fight for these items. I respect the fact that Nosfa is trying to contest these items, but it's just not going to be enough. If you feel like you're not going to get the item, just give it up for the time being. Work on getting the weapons in your arsenal and then get the chip damage done afterwards. Again, he contested for the heavy. Good try, but it's just not enough as now... Rafa's going to be pushing in for top mid. Going to try and take down Nosfa again. Misses the first rail. Will he go for the second one? He surely doesn't know he's going to come out. Yes, he will. I'm surprised Nosfa managed to win that. But end of the day, at least Nosfa got the first frag on the board. A little bit too late. Still only got three minutes 40 remaining. Rafa. Solid lead built up here. Nosfa finally gets one. It's coming a little bit late, though. Just really off the back of how large of a lead Traff Rafa's built himself. Nosfa, he's going to go down here on the encounter. Overwhelmed again. That's 14 to 1 as the split falls back in the manner that it feels like it is just going to keep on going. And right now Rafa's just winning at every single fight. Again, forcing him off the items as well. Being able to pick that mega back up to replenish himself. Launches back over towards the rail room, peering out. Trying to figure out where exactly Nosfa is. Didn't spot him out behind him as he repositions. Peeks out with the warning rocket going across. Barely showing a bit of skin. As he's trying to avoid Rafa as much as he can. The 90 there was disgusting. That was a sick shot to actually land. As he flies himself through the air. Still obliterating him with the rail at every instance. The shotgun has been a specialty for Rafa, but instead he wants to try and perforate him and reappear. Comes back from the shadows as he'll assault Nosfa, taking him down, blowing the back of his noggin clean off. 15-1 here, Jack, and there's just no stopping this man, especially with the shotgun at that range. Just barely enough damage, picks up the heavy, stacks up to the eyeballs again. Rockets come in, the diamond rocket from the second one, gets the LG out. Will he clean him up? Of course he will. 17 to 1. Nosfer is just doing everything he can. He's trying to push it in now for the LG, gets caught on spawn. Foot left on 45 HP, even after the first fight. And he's going to push him for the Mega and see if he can stop him going for that rail. Will he be able to? I'm pretty sure he will be able to. Here's some nice rockets just trying to back away. Got 100 on one, 30 on another, and clean him up with the shotgun. Ghost walk just as a backup, just in case. Lovely stuff here from Rafa. He's going to pick up the next heavy and see if he can extend his lead just, just a little bit more before the time limit's reached. Oh, dude. This is the true display of just Rafa wanting to lay down the law and teach Nos for a lesson here going into this game. That's all he's been doing. <sighs> Shotgun really packing a punch. Nosfer's ragdoll really summarizing the entire game so far as he's just getting left broken, shattered into every single fight he walks into. Rafa is at 20 frags. It looked like it was going this way. And he's actually been able to back it up by continuing to just so no mercy, no signs of slowing down. And he's still oh. fighting too for now. The timing has been so good as well. Some of the ghost walks he's pulled out into this game are, are just ridiculous. It's a 101 of how to use Nyx for the aggressive ghost walk to escape against the dire orb. Oh, he's been turning on a dime. It really has. We haven't really seen the... Well, we haven't had an opportunity to see him use it on the back foot either. Just more to the advantage to try and execute and finish off some of these frags. First rail comes on board. Just barely misses the second. That was, I would say, a little bit optimistic, but doable if Nosfa was actually predicted to go up that top mid spot. Gets the Mega anyway. Nosfa 
Still looking to flank round. He's going to try and get that Tom in if he can. Go straight through. Very risky play there. But finish Rafa off anyway. Gets a couple of frags back, but it's just too little too late here. With only 10 seconds left remaining. He's have to try and reset. See if he can take him on the third map if he can. This is the first. Tries to get him with the rocket, but not really too much here. Damage has already been done. Rafa cleans him up with the MG. And speaking of Gs, that is GG for the second map. We'll be heading into the third one soon. But the second one, completely different from the first one in some ways. But then again, it's just full item control from Rafa. And also became a bit too predictable after the first couple of minutes of the game. Oh, Harry. It, it's just, it's like watching a T-Rex in with <laughs> fluffy white kittens, mate. <laughs> He, he was just tearing it to shreds. There was no chance that they could defend themselves. They've got paws. They've got murder mittens. He's got a massive jaw that crunches down on you at every instance. And that's all Rafa did. He went in and he bullied Nosfa on that map. That's just a 101 display of how to play Nyx to a very high level there on Awoken. And he just gave it. Quite literally, in terms of every single firefight, he just did not stop. He pulled into the station. He kept going. He plowed through the wall. Madness. You saw there as well that Nosfer was kind of becoming a little bit more easy to understand on what he was going to do next in terms of his course of action. Like, after he lost, you know, a bit of the lead for about 5 or 6 nil, Nosfer kept doing the same thing, kept bouncing up to top mid from the same place every single time, wouldn't make too many rotations, wasn't really, I wouldn't say trying, but of course, like, doing little things like going up on that bounce pad, knowing that Rafa is just sitting there waiting for you with the LG. The fly out the window was quite cool, don't get me wrong, I was, uh, I was chuckling at that quite a bit. The ghost walk abuse was fantastic, constantly making Nosfa guess exactly where he could be. Of course it's going to be around him, it's just a matter of where and how and, you know, it's, I think Nosfa just knew that he was going to die and <laughs> he's thinking about his next spawn already. But Nosfa needs to be a bit more cautious next time. In future when he plays Awoken, if someone is top mid, and you are below them and you know they've picked up the LG or they spawned at the LG and picked up earlier. Just don't got that bounce pad. Just back off and fight on your terms. Don't purposely give them the advantage just because you're a little bit fed up of how things are going in that game. It's not kind of really why you want to actually do things. It's just going to get you more annoyed and frustrated. But it's just one of those things though. We know Nosfer is a very flashy player. It's very, very good. But Ralph is just getting silly now. No. No, yeah, Rafa's just, uh, he's the schoolyard bully, Harry. He's on the playground and he is just stealing everyone's Pokemon cards. They have no right to defend themselves and they just can't. He's just far too strong. Going into ruins, I feel like that's just going to be the same order once again. It seems like he will really just be coming out, laying down the law here. Because <sighs> it doesn't seem like there is a way to stop him. And in terms of the last map, obviously you do have a Strog and Pika pick there for Nosfa. So he's got the speed, he's got the elegance. He is a good Strog player. But is he going to be good tonight versus Rafa? He's a whole different kettle of fish. It's still, you know, pretty much been impossible for players to be able to take series wins off him throughout the course of the regular season. I don't feel like that's going to change now. He's already won the series. He's just got to get the third map to guarantee himself the extra points, which Rafa's the only one that doesn't need extra points at this point, Harry. <laughs> is there much point? I don't know. There's no point, really, is he? He's got so many points. He's pretty much laughing in this moment in time. If he gets another 3-0, then he really will be laughing here. As Nosfer still hasn't taken a map off Rafa yet. Rafa up 2-0 in the series. But can... Not for take map number three. That's still a big ask, a tall order. But Nosfer could do it if he really puts his mind to it. As already things have gotten a little bit bad for Nosfer as the first rail hit Nosfer there from Rafa. He manages to get to rockets, just adding all the weapons into his arsenal again as the heavy will come up in the next five seconds. Of course, Rafa will be contesting that shortly. Uncharacteristic of Rafa to miss the first one, gets the second one. Of course, he gets the hard the rails. And now we'll be looking to go for that Mega. And Mega's been up for quite a bit. It was up for at least another five seconds more than usual. But the timings aren't too bad. With that amount of time left, Rafa could easily go for the Mega straight after the Heavy if he has to. But Nosfer hiding in that Tribolt room gets the first rail. Rafa backs away for now. A minute in already. Not really seen too much coming out of it just yet, apart from the early altercations. Rafa playing towards heavy, he'll pick that up. Nosfer's just grabbed the respective other major item towards the other side as he'll get himself the mega to play with. 
the first couple of shots start coming through. Good movement there from Nosfer, putting himself up on the ledge. Unfortunately, he didn't realize the location that Raffle was in. He gets the tag off into his derriere as he will fire out the first shot from the rail. Nosfer backs off because of it, and Raffle just charges in, wants to get up close and personal, hits him with a splash damage, and there will be a splash of Nosfer's body parts all over the floor, Harry. Giblets everywhere as he takes him down to kick us off, sends in Timmy the turret as well, and sticks to his guns with the LG. That's two frags found in a matter of seconds here for Rafa. As soon as he gets his feet off the ground, he does not slow down. He really hasn't. Nosfer may have burned the heavy, but actually managed to successfully win that bout. I was a little bit surprised there, but now he's going to be going up to recover from that last fight. Managed to pick up the light. Got the first rail is going to be charging in, try and clean up Rafa if he can. But Rafa decides to back away, completely understandable. And is looking to wait in that LG room until he knows what Nosfer could be up to. Packs down, destroys the turret. Feeds Rafa the information required. But at least Nosfer's still got this height control. Just trying to keep Rafa at bay here. But as I say that now, Rafa's the one with the height advantage. He's the one who's trying to keep Nosfer down if he can. But the Mega is coming up in the next 10 seconds. Is Nosfer going to try and go for that and create an opportunity? Or is he just going to stay at that heavy? The timings are way too off key here. So he may have to, for now, just let it go. And just go straight for the heavy, which he has done, but it's a little bit too late. Rafa, as well as getting heavy, he managed to, as well, take down Nosfer. Nosfer should have probably weighted down a little bit lower and just been a little bit more patient here. But it doesn't matter. It's just another frag for Rafa. As Nosfer is just trying to survive for now, but Rafa's taking him down again. But as I say, that Nosfer's committed suicide. Oh, no. He went down in a hizzy, Harry. It all went wrong. He was like a ballerina there doing some three-point turns and just got obliterated. Response back, though, from Nosfer is good. From the first contact he gets, he hits the rail, pushes in as well. Only issue is, in the meantime, Raph has been able to somewhat replenish himself, walking his way into the heavy. They're both darting, making moves back over towards the mega as well, but Raph is quicker off the draw. The reposition works out better for him, but the peak of punishment comes out from Nosfer tag after tag. He actually bests him here. He gets that frag to play with again. It would be a two to three split, but due to the fact obviously he had that unfortunate suicide, they are still a little bit further away from one another. One to three, push from Rafa. He's really testing his might here as he charges in. Only issue is he might get the info off the back of Timmy the turret, but he'll now also know that nosfer has been able to pick up the heavy, give himself so much more of a stack to play with. Pre-fire shot straight off the spawn from the teleporter as well. In case Rafa had repositioned that way, he'll spot him, but he swings and he misses. Doesn't connect it, but he will land that one. The follow-up shot. Whoa, the rails from Nosfer. Saving him and keeping him alive into the matchup at this point. Beautiful shots. I think Nosfer has to do to try and get a frag from Rafa. Rafa gets to trade frag with the nail gun. That was beautiful stuff from him. But Rafa does have that ball to lead. Vance on the eye to try and get up for the mega, which he does do successfully. But look at the timings here, Jack of the Items. About nine seconds apart. And that's plenty of time and plenty of room for Rafa to contest both. As long as he keeps Nosfer in check in bay, which he has done. We'll be cleaning up very soon. And there we go. So that's Rafa now. And as it his lead again, leaves a turret because he knows some of the most common plays is to go for the LG or the rail straight away on spawn. But will he be able to survive it? It looks like he can. As if we're going for that mega and picks it up successfully. Could be another frag. Nope. Decides to back away. But Rafa's not in a position to take this engagement. Although he is leading, he doesn't necessarily need to fully overcommit to too many of these fights. That was an awkward encounter. Oh, no. It looks somewhat akin to when you're at a shop, Harry, and you say goodbye to someone you know, and then you both end up walking the same way, and you just kind of stand there and look at each other. Oh, I hate that. That's the worst. That's what it looked like. Unfortunately, it is going to end in this position. Now going five to three. Nosfer gets another frag. Let's see if he can build off the back of it then as he peeks back towards Mega. Gets a clear line of sight. Sees that Rafa isn't around and he can't really do much. So instead, just perches himself over the hole, watching the hatch down towards the LG. Nearly hitting these fadeaway rails as well. Sends in the peeker as a bit of a drone. He's waiting until the pre-fire stops so it doesn't instantly get obliterated. Barely dodging these rails as well, like an advanced game of Gallagher. It really is. He's trying to find out more information. He's got everything he knows. Ruff is coming straight after him. 
He's picked up the heavy, he's picked up the mega, so that's two big info players here. Nosfer knows exactly when the timing's on for both. So when he needs to contest it, he can do, and he has the stack to do it as he's waiting for the next heavy coming up in the next seven seconds. Just a little bit of damage there taken, but Rafa doesn't care. He's going straight in. First rocket's great. The second one's a bit of a miss. Third one, fantastic. 70 HP, gets the heavy. He's now going to look to try and pin Nosfer down if he can. Not with that stack, he will not. But the turret will go down. It's flying straight in. Bit too late. He's picked up the mega. Cleans up Nosfer again. 7-3. Yeah, this is just uh, starting to fall into the normality, really. It gets into the groove for Rafa, and then he just keeps hitting it. He knows the weak spot, and he'll capitalize off the back of it. There is a couple of responses here and there from Nosfer. Only issue is, it's not really coming out thick and fast enough. He needs to build himself more of a lead. He'll send in the Pika once again, really trying to chase him down that time, but doesn't work out. And actually get the hit off with the Kamikaze Assault. Straight back up the bounce pad once again as well. And just perches himself up. Holding to an angle like a gangster. Laid up against the wall, waiting for a push to come through. Spots the turret, will deal with it. Gets shot in the back of the head though because of his overcommittal. He's strapped towards the stairwell, trying to fight down. Heavy's up in one second. They're both in the heavy room. Nosfer's taking hit after hit. Rafa sideswipes him, takes him down with the LG. Cleans up there on the outcome and now has four frags advantage over Nosfer here on the third and final map. Rafa. Signs to back away for now. He's got the four frag lead. He wants to keep it this way and there's only two minutes remaining. As Nosfer is looking to contest these items, Rafa has no intention but to do chip damage after he he appears, but the picky comes in. Good shot there from Rafa. Turret is down. He's looking to go for this mega, and Nosfer's got a feeling he could be doing the same as he's going to try and rotate rounds. What's going to go the rocket way? He's going to start to go straight into him. It's a very ballsy play. He bounces over the mega and cleans him up nicely with the rail straight afterwards. Hitting the rail shots and derailing the game for Nosfer. He's absolutely on point right now. The train yard Punisher himself makes his moves back across, heads up the bounce pad and skedaddles his way out of there to stay alive for the meantime. Already pre-firing, waiting for Nosfer to appear out of thin air and to knock the air straight out of his lungs with a nice little punch to the gut. Timmy gives away the info as well as the turret will get first contact against Nosfer. Right around the corner and it seemed like he was actually gonna get another kill issue is not first stands up for himself shoot back busts his lip gets the kill and brings it back to a nine to five issue is time is not on his side we're coming down to the last 45 seconds of the game here harry last 45 seconds of the series and it seems as if it will probably just be a definite win for rafa now taking it as a full 3-0 and getting all of the points for his troubles he certainly will. Nosfer's, you know, done a great comeback here. Did everything he could to try and make something happen. We've seen that a lot in Ruins over the last few weeks in a lot of his matches, but sadly it's not going to be the case. Nosfer may have the agility and mobility to at least try and catch on Rafa, but it's just too little too late here. He won't get free frags in 10 seconds, of course, but that will be GG's. Anyway, he's going to try and clean Rafa up once more. No, he won't. He will get a mid-air rocket anyway. Rafa survives on 7 HP just to make matters worse, and that'll be GG. Rafa takes the map and the series in quite comfortable fashion, 3-0. And looking at the damage dealt there, only a few hundred there apart. Well, Nosfer, 50% looking good, but it's just not enough here, Jack. No, just not enough in the end. Ruins, locked down by Rafa. And that's pretty much the story of the series, right? The whole way through, he looked so good. It, it looked like classic Rafa on parade, just vintage stuff the entire time. Overpowers Nosfa throughout that one and just bests him at every turn, Harry. A great series to watch in terms of the frags. We had a lot of highlights coming out of it, but there's not really much that we've, we've learned from that one. That's just more standard Rafa. It pretty much was. It was just standard contesting of the items. Would make a few more risks than what normal players would do. Nosfer kind of didn't expect it. There were certain players where Nosfer would actually assume that no one's coming down, but Rafa would leave it at the last minute. It's a bit of a mixed bag, uh, really. When he actually prepares for the items, he either does it 10 or 15 seconds in advance or will do it literally in the last couple of seconds to make you think that, okay, he's not coming down. It makes you kind of relax a little bit, but you've got to always make sure you're on edge for some of these items, especially for the heavy as well. It's... um. 
a, a real difficult task, especially if you're at a disadvantage of a stack. It's hard to contest that heavy sometimes. Most players will normally try and just wait for the Mega instead and do chip damage from there. But at the end of the day, I think Nosford did play a bit better compared to what he did last time against Rafa back in uh, stage three, but almost the same result anyway. Yeah, I, you know, it, it's hard, right? We're never really going to see that many series wins being taken off Rafa. It, Rafa, it's still a feat if you do get a map win off him. And that's just what he did. Parappa the Rapper just dropping sick bars throughout the course of the game. Again, Harry, he doesn't miss a beat when it comes to his movement, when it comes to hitting shots. He's always on the money. And that's basically what he gave to us again throughout the entire series there. And just rounds up a pretty solid day of Quake all in all, Harry. We've had some good games tonight. Yeah, we've had some right crackers here. You know, we've had a couple of upsets as well. We've had Avic taking it early against Wenger. We did not expect that in the slightest. We know how good Avic is, but we never thought it would be, you know, that much of a slobber knocker like you normally say as well, Jack. But yeah. in all fairness, it's been a great day. A lot of games were not close than usual. I mean, there's some matches which were predicted to be and what were expected to be like some hard fought wins or losses depending on what side of the boat you're on but apart from that it's been a fantastic day yeah can't complain no it's been good I, I think we've had a lot of great results tonight coming through with some of the highlights there from that Rafa matchup as well just to close it down but the whole day was just jam-packed full of highlights from start to finish all of the games had something. Um, they were all quite different. Obviously, the last three matchups we had as well, coming in with that CNZ Cypher game and now finishing on Rafa Nosfer. It's been great. It's been a good night. Yeah, it's been ridiculous. Not much, It's like I said earlier, not much was predictable. Some of it was, but it's nice to have a little bit of a change here and there. Like, you know, it's nice to see Avec, who's, you know, quite far down in the EU region in terms of points and everything to actually come back mm -hmm. up and beat Benge. Like, you know, it's not to be expected in the slightest. We know how good Avic is, and it's just great to see some of these matchups. And even then, Cypher was a little bit challenged earlier, but it was okay in the end. He's going to take down CNZ quite easily. Rafa just showing what he does best, and Dahang doing the same thing as well against Genic. Genic tried to make something happen in that last map earlier, then he couldn't really make it happen. you just got to remember that a lot of these players need to not throw their mentality out the window too much. When they're like four or five frags down, they kind of become a little bit more predictable, like I said earlier, and kind of, you know, ride that struggle bus towards the end. But some of them do, some of them don't. It just depends on the player, really. Yeah. Well, we can have a look back through the schedule as well and just see how the games have gone down tonight. If you are just joining us, we can refresh your memory a little bit and give you an idea for what you've missed out on. As there was some pretty exciting games the whole way, as you touched on, Harry, we had some great bangers towards the start. And as we started to taper off into the night as well, we were given a bit of a second wind with some even better games. Highlights to look at here, though. Definitely got to look at that Zenoku series for me. The game versus Chain, they were close. They were really good. Um, it's just been nice to see the improvement that Zeniku has had as a whole, right? We're, we're seeing him play better and better every single week now. It's exciting to watch. I think Genic actually summed it up best. Uh, he did a tweet and he said that, I just want to take the time to say it's amazing how much Zeniku has improved over the past two stages. Really an insane player, well played. And he is. It's been awesome to see Zeniku doing better and better, Harry. I think in this time, in 12 months' time, he'll actually be phenomenal. You know, we've had some great Australian players uh, like years ago in the past in the Quake scene, and he could be the next big thing. We don't actually know yet. Not only just in the Australian scene, but just globally, worldwide. You know, he's got long-term goals. I'm excited to see how he progresses next. It's just nice to be, you feel like you're part of his journey, like just watch him kind of grow as a player day in day out after each week to see exactly what he does differently and how he progresses it's definitely going to be uh, a change of life for him in terms of how he actually plays in game and i just realized as well effortless i do not think he's going to play awoken again after that first game i think psyche kind of <laughs> knocked his clogs a little bit during the first map but molten falls and blood run was perfectly fine and a bit of a shame really uh, zanaku that was a great series how can i forget that when chain just barely managed to rock him around the eye on ruins in the final map that was just, oh, was just yeah. ridiculous. I, I can't even almost forgot avec the upset that was again the endpoint man himself managed to change things up just phenomenal it's been a great day yeah beating out the maestro man -dem. it was uh it was pretty exciting here is the other four games that went down tonight as well of course we started it off with genic versus to hang and to hang does what he does best dismantles his opponent walking away there with a fairly easy victory overall in the 3-0 then we had a couple of closer games towards the mid portion cnz versus cypher 
Cypher, he showed signs of frustration in the final map, but throughout the entire series, he looked very good. He was like a hot knife through butter, Harry. He just started to slow down a little bit and cooled off towards the end when C and Z clapped back. Look at those scorelines though between Razy and Kilson. You couldn't actually make it up, could you? Kilson 15-2 first map, and razy has gone, oh, no, that's fine, I'll have a bit of a go. 14-1, ridiculous. And then it had a, a lot of close-range battles. You know, you saw Kilson putting up a lot of traps with the ball rush and shotgun, and it kind of worked in his favour for a lot of those frags, and Kilson taking that. I don't think too many of us expected it, considering how well Razy was doing, especially after the second map. And even in CNZ, you know, there was a few times where he could have done a bit better on the second map. He kind of let things go a little bit too much, but it's just one of those things. Corrupted Keep can get a little bit out of hand, depending on the circumstances of the item control. And Genic, it was nice, you know, he put up a good fight against the hang. Probably played it a little bit too safe in some areas. Should have charged a bit more and delayed some of the items. But apart from that, it could have been a lot worse from what I've seen uh, in previous weeks. Oh yeah, it, it certainly could have been throughout. But those are the games that we had tonight. All of them were very enjoyable. And of course, really, that just means in the grand scheme of things, how has it affected the overall standings as well, Harry? And what we should do to have contacts for that is come in with the unupdated standings. So these are the standings going into tonight's show. Let's have a look at those. And we can see where that then chalks up versus the new standings after. Let's have a look at this at first, Harry key points that are pointing out here for you before we get into the updated standings i think after earlier the hang should still well should now be in the top four razy i can't remember from his stat line i think he will put, you never know the hang could even be third we'll have to double check earlier side will be creeping up around the top eight top seven earlier i'm sure he will do when the thing's been updated nosfer will probably stay the same but tox even though he hasn't played yet we'll have to see what happens when he does play next week to try and change things up but Avic should rise up a little bit as well after this scoreline he beat Benga earlier 2-1 they should creep up a few positions well let's have a look let's bring on the updated standings and see how this switches things up in terms of the placement as you can see it will now be slapped on screen there Harry and there we go to hang did say he'll be third or fourth he's actually third by quite a clear margin 30 points and just looking down at the moment Zanaka's just creeping up a little bit but it's going to take a little bit of time even though he got that one map win earlier but that was enough anyway to keep in line with CNZ I'm just having a look around now looks like base is overtaking Cooler but Cooler has a play today he's had a buy which is understandable and Venga sadly dropped down to sixth Man. well there you go some interesting results coming off the back of today's stream then as that's where everything lies now the dust has settled for another day in the brawl for the belt throughout this really at this point down to the crunch season we're in the last few weeks you know this is week seven coming in next week Harry, that's going to be week eight there's not much of the competition left so this really is do or die for a lot of our competitors so it's good to see obviously some of the names creeping a bit further up the standings towards the end and still shaking things up nothing set in stone yet not at all now still three weeks left remaining you can see the scoreboard will just change every single week no one's got a clear margin apart from rafa kilson is slowly getting away with things but one of the EU players, either Razy, Benga, or Cypher, are going to have to get a few free zeros in order to try and keep Kilson down a little bit. <laughs> Let's take off the pedal to the metal in that kind of way. But yeah, Kilson looks like he could be far enough up there. Now there's only three weeks remaining to stay in that second place spot. The hang, if he continues what he's doing in the Americas currently, then he should be fine. But he does play against Rafa in week number 10, I believe. So he's going to try and make sure to get at least these next two wins on his belt before he plays against Rafa. Yeah, well... A good day all in all, Harry. Some great results. Obviously, the shake-up on the standings. It's affected things a little bit. There's been some good movement. Any final thoughts on today's matchups? Final thoughts, all the matches have been great. And for everyone at home still watching the Quake Pro League, make sure to follow the players who are streaming. They're always streaming their casual games, their scrims. Gives you an idea of what they're going to be doing before the Quake Pro League starts. So make sure to follow them as well as the, uh, the Quake Pro League. No, you are absolutely right. That's where you'll stay up to date with all the latest and greatest coming out from our professionals. Definitely keep up to date with what they're up to. They've dropped some great content online. There's been some awesome stuff. That's what we were talking about earlier when we mentioned Big Man Zeniku. 
But Harry, that's it. We're done and dusted for another day. It must come to a close here tonight. We will be back with more action. Obviously, same time, same place. The Pro League has still got a couple more weeks to go before we wrap up going to the end of Stage 4. But thank you for everyone that has tuned in throughout the course of the day. Thank you, of course, for the magnificent producer, Reese from Face It, that keeps this show trogging along. And thank you so much to Ollie, the man behind the replays as well, as it's his final broadcast tonight. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Harry, you're a star. I'll see you another time. Have a good one, lads.